For 2022, if you're looking at really making a marketing plan, the very first thing you need to do is focus, focus your efforts and get really honest about who are your people, where are they hanging out? Uh, you know, is that social media? Is it on first Fridays on main street? Is it in email or text message, whatever it is, is it at high school football games? And then you need to get really clear about the message you're going to deliver to those people in those places. Starting or growing your business is hard work. But now you are listening to the Better Business Podcast with me, Steve Cook, and I'm going to try and make it a little easier on you. We on this podcast help you grow a better business with real advice from professionals. And today is no different. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Better Business Podcast. I am your congested, stuffy host, Steve Cook. And today, my guest is a man by the name of Chris Fox. Now, typically when I do an episode, I do not know my guest that well. We've maybe talked two or three times before the episode. However, Chris Fox and I have worked together for coming up on a year now. Chris is our head marketing uh, agency that we rely on to um, do everything for us, on, not only on this podcast and all of my personal brand things, but also at my family's business, Cook, Feed, and Outdoors. So me and Chris today are talking about the 2022 marketing plan that each and every retailer should have. Chris started his company, Fox Strategies, because he realized that most businesses struggle with marketing. So to help business owners create more marketing, or he helps create, helps business owners create marketing that they can easily use to grow. He understands how small business owners feel because he spent more than 15 years of his life in small business and nonprofit marketing. Chris now specializes in how to build an audience and then what to say to them once they're listening. He is a certified marketing guide through StoryBrand, a frequent public speaker, and a passionate small business advocate. When he's not building marketing strategy or content, Chris loves to read, hike, and spend time with his lovely wife, Heidi, and their three wonderful children. Christopher, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here after being behind the scenes all these months. Here you are, front and center. <laughs> say what you want to say. Get it out now. Uh, no, I really do love the podcast. Um, we, My team and I were just joking uh, the other day about how we're paid to listen to this podcast, but we've also <laughs> learned so much. And so we keep recommending it to people and saying like, hey, you've got to go listen to this podcast. Like, we're not just saying that because we produce it. You need to listen. Well, I, uh, yeah, you, you and your team probably listen to it more than anybody. So as my number one, we hear, uh, number we hear one everyone. fans, yeah. I, I appreciate you. <laughs> I love it. Heard every episode. <laughs> All right. So today, something that you are an expert in creating a 2022 marketing plan. And today I want to focus on specifically kind of the retail audience. Of course, you know, I think marketing for an e-commerce uh, brand or an e-commerce company, that's going to come with a whole host of um, Google, social media, mm -hmm. you know, backlinks, this and that, and, you know, all kinds of different things that go along with that. But I want to focus on like a retail marketing plan. Um, somebody that, you know, it's a mom and pop store, something like that, where they need to drive foot traffic in 2022. Mm -hmm. What should a retail store do? Let's go big, big question. What mm -hmm. should a retail store do in 2022 to get more customers? Oh yeah. So good question. I, I always tell people that, um, marketing is one of those things that, um, is half art and half science and the science half, um, you know, is all of the data and the metrics and, uh, you know, tracking and, 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 all of the little acronyms that everybody, you know, loves to throw around. Um, and then the art side is, so much wrapped up in branding and color and uh, writing and the creative side of, of, you know, what marketing is. And we've sort of blended marketing and advertising. And I think that maybe as a small 
retail store, uh, you know, who needs more foot traffic or especially, you know, in the, in the ever modernizing world of e-commerce. So if you're a small e-commerce store, your foot traffic, right, is eyes on your website, eyes on your, your store. So if you need that um, foot traffic, you got to acknowledge that some of your marketing is going to be creative and art, and some of your marketing is going to be science and data. Um, And you have to find a good blend of that. The the biggest piece of advice I would give to any small, um, you know, business who's looking for help in marketing, you need a good balance. You cannot go to those shops that are just those, those agencies are just focused on SEO, Facebook ads, um, you know, tracking data because they'll bleed you dry, uh, on a whole bunch of numbers that are difficult for you to understand. And then you also can't go to those, you know, shops or agencies that are really just interested in selling you a, a, a prettier new website. Um, or, you know, a new logo or new colors, new business cards, because they'll bleed you dry to feel good about your marketing efforts. And in either camp, uh, you're not really getting a good blend of both of them. But big picture, what I would say for retailers in 2022, you're looking to get eyes on your stuff, whether that's through, you know, foot traffic in a physical shop or traffic to your website. You need to get really, really clear about what you offer people um, and not it's not the product or service, right? If you're a retail store, Steve, you guys sell feed. Um, what you offer is not feed, um, although we do market that. What you really offer is an easier life with the feed you already need to have, right? These people need this product. Um, and so your offer truly is how do we help you get it easier? How do we help you get it faster, better, cheaper, whatever it is, that second layer of the feature benefit idea in marketing, um, is really, let's reframe it. How do you make your life? How do you make your customers lives better? That's your offer. Now market that relentlessly. And for those of you who are in retail side and it's not a need, right? Like somebody doesn't need feed for their horse. Somebody doesn't need, uh, I don't know, you know, like a new car, somebody doesn't need, um, whatever. And you're kind of in that luxury area where it's like, people don't need this, but they want it or they want to buy it shop or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Well. Not an actual need, but still a luxury. The thing is you still make people's lives better. So that's still your angle, right? So, um, if it's a coffee, you know, stop by today on your way to work for a coffee to start your morning, right? The idea of getting your day started correctly, um, is in no way a physical product, but it is an outstanding offer from a local coffee shop. So take a step back even farther though. I think a lot of times when people hear the, the term a marketing person or something like that, they're like, all right, they're going to, you know, update my website, my social media pages or whatever <clears throat> through your experience with obviously our companies and, and your other clients. Is there anything that, you know, marketing in general, the idea of marketing is to, like you said, get eyeballs on your, <laughs> what you're selling or to get foot traffic in your door. What should people do? I mean, is there anything outside of the box that you've seen um, in 2022 that people should maybe pay attention to focus on that could be in-person events that could be, you know, uh, whatever they, they held a car wash and look how many people showed up or whatever it is. Yeah. Is there anything that you've seen maybe outside of the box that people should think about or focus on? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's, it, I love that you brought up the idea of like out of the box. So on the podcast, we've had, uh, you know, Mike McCallowitz with his new book, get different, um, outstanding book, outstanding concept. And so here's, here's kind of the metaphor I'll set up the vehicle um, of your marketing as a small business can be anything. It can be a car wash and it can be an in-person event. It can be, you know, a small business Saturday thing. It can be your town's main street, you know, first Friday, like we have first Friday in Norman, um, whatever your town will have something or their community events you can build all the way to social media, your website, uh, a printed brochure, that's still a vehicle. So all across the board, you have a a vehicle for your marketing that needs to be filled with something. So the question is, is kind of two parts. What's the vehicle, but you can't take your vehicle anywhere until you've loaded it up with something. 
and what is that? And that is a brand message. That is a marketing. Those are marketing words that you're saying to people. And so for 2022, if you're looking at really making a marketing plan, the very first thing you need to do is focus, focus your efforts and get really honest about who are your people, where are they hanging out? Uh, you know, is that social media? Is it on first Fridays on main street? Is it in email or text message, whatever it is, is it at high school football games? And then you need to get really clear about the message you're going to deliver to those people in those places. So when you get really clear about what you're offering and you've written that down and you're getting ready to repeat it, you're going to load that message, whatever it is, whatever you offer, how you make people's lives better, how they get it into that vehicle, into, into as many vehicles as you can afford. So if you've got a vehicle of a community event, how does your clear message about what you offer, how it makes life better and how you get it fit into that community event? If your vehicle is a brochure that's printed and you put it at hotels or the chamber of commerce, or you put it on, you know, in uh, store counters around town, what are the words that are describing what you offer, how it makes people's lives better and how you get it? Huge one is a website. All a website is a vehicle for your marketing message. But if you don't have a good marketing message, you have an empty car that's going nowhere. And that's probably the worst mistake businesses make with a website is it's not really set up to inform people of those three things. So once you find your brand, you know, just to kind of recap where you're at, um, you find your customer, you find what that customer wants or needs as it relates to your product. So now you know how to, what the proper things you should say to them. Yeah. Then you find out where is that customer hanging out? Um, whether that's like you had mentioned on in a certain location at a certain event, wherever it might be. So let me ask you this. Let's say that you have, you've one, two, three step through that process. And now you found this is where this person is but that customer is hanging out in multiple lo locations. So they might be hanging out at this event, but they're also on Instagram. They're also, um, they also all have cell phones. So I could direct call them. I could advertise on Instagram or I could be at this in-person event. In your opinion, do you think that it's more important for somebody to focus on just focus on that event or should we scratch the surface on all three of those different areas? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. And I think that there's no straightforward answer there, but let me give you a couple of scenarios in which You're I would such say- such a politician. You're going to dance all the way around this, I know. Well, and it, it's here's here's the thing. <laughs> and okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you this. If you're just starting out or you're really hurting for marketing efforts in your small business, just pick one. Pick one and and just do it as much as you possibly can. And so if that's Chamber of Commerce stuff, if you feel like your people are at the chamber of commerce and you're a B2B small business, or, you know, if you're a retail, like we were talking about earlier, small retail, and your people are just in your, in your hometown or whatever, find the vehicle, the place that you can market there and go all in on that. So if it's the chamber of commerce, go to every stinking event that they have, you know, take out the ad in the, um, chamber book, sponsor the event, go to the annual awards, whatever it is. Um, if you are, you know, a local retailer and you got a local football team who needs sponsors and you know that your people show up to those football games on Friday nights, then you take out an ad, you know, next to the scoreboard or you put sponsor like the field goal kick. So your business name gets mentioned at every field goal. And here's an extra tip. Don't just let them put your logo up on the screen or up on that billboard. You need to write a little message that says what you offer, how it makes people's lives better and how they get it with your logo. And we call that a one liner in the story brand framework. And you put your one liner up on that scoreboard every time there's a field goal. That's outstanding marketing. And you don't have to open Instagram and you don't have to pay a printer and you don't have to build a website. Now, those other things may be necessary at different times. But if you're just starting, pick one. If you're really looking to diversify, or like you said, Steve, if your people hang out at multiple places, it's not a bad thing to quote unquote, scratch the surface of several different channels in marketing. If, and only if your messaging in every single one of those channels is lockstep consistent with the other channel and go back to that one liner. So that one liner quick formula again, uh, it's, you know, what you offer, how it makes their lives better and how they get it 
you write a message like that and you put it in your brochure and you put it on your website and you put it on the billboard at the high school football game and you put it, uh, you know, at the chamber uh, event that you sponsor or whatever, and you scratch the surface. So if you're looking to go to the next level or grow, then your investment in marketing and hear me is not you do not change your message. You do not rebrand your business. You go to new marketing channels, new vehicles, and you put the same reliable, clear message into that vehicle and you run it. All right. So since you're my marketing guy, I get to push back on things you say. So I want to ask okay. you with that, with that, what if let's say you're a grocery store and you're a small hometown grocery store. And so you've decided yeah. that you're going to sponsor the high school football team. And you have, you know, that the majority of people at a high school game are probably watching the game are 40 to 65 or something like that, because they're either parents or grandparents for the most part. Okay. And so that messaging might be, you know, shop at your small hometown deal, the grocery store, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. However, you also run Instagram ads and it's come by for lunch um, during your school break and you advertise that to 16 to um, 18 year olds that are located in that small hometown. If your messaging is different, do you think that's a bad thing or is that not exactly what you were talking about? Ooh, yeah. Okay. Great question. So everything that I've said before is single customer persona focused. Well, so if you have different customers that changes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you've got just one customer that you serve and it's kind of in one persona, you have one message and you put it in as many channels as you can afford. If you have multiple personas, so take our grocery channel, ex our grocery store example. Technically, what you just described is a grocery store that also has a lunch counter inside of it, right? And so those really are two different products, and we're, we're mm. talking it to two different audiences. And so that's where you would then get focused. And instead of putting up on the high school scoreboard on a Friday night, come by during lunch because you've realized most of your younger audience isn't, uh, you know, isn't at the game or isn't looking at the scoreboard. They're looking at their phones and they're on Instagram, even during the game. You, or the girl then they're you, trying to take on a date. Yeah. <laughs> Focus is elsewhere. Then you, then you really split your marketing budget to the two areas that you're trying to sell. Our lunch counter Monday through Fridays, you know, noon to one and our Saturdays and Sundays when all the families in town are out on their grocery runs and you get really clear about, how it makes life better for each of those people. So we've got a, you know, 16 year old sophomore at the high school, the lunch counter may make life better because it's easy, cheap, fast lunch. You, you walk in, you get it, you walk out, your life is easy, right? It's not waiting. It's not hard. It's not expensive. If you're the grocery store side of that business and you're your persona is the, you know, middle-aged um, mom who's shopping and wants to save a buck, but does want to support local, then maybe your message is we honor the big box retailer coupons while, you know, supporting your local community. And so it's easier to shop here and you don't feel like you're wasting money. So those messages then go out to your separate channels. Yeah, that's great. Great clarification on that because I knew, I knew where you stood on it. So that's why I was, uh, yeah, I was making sure that that came across clearly. What do you think when talking about this, you know, just surely there's certain businesses and things like that that are running through your mind um, of poor examples. What do you mm. think is the biggest waste of money when it comes to a 2022 marketing plan that that small businesses, in particular retail businesses, waste their money on? Um, biggest waste of money in 2022 for retail businesses. Oh man. Oh man. Um, I'll, I'll say this and it's a little bit of a political answer. So I apologize. I would say that the <laughs> biggest waste of money is going to be spending money on marketing or advertising. Anytime you don't have a clear message or in any place that your audience isn't hanging out. And so, okay, go back to yeah, go back to our grocery store example. If this grocery store runs a lunch counter for high school students, if they are spending money on Facebook ads, if they're spending money on a website um, for this lunch counter in particular, they're throwing money out the window. Mm. 
What they need to be spending money on is advertisements, if possible, inside the school, right? So like a lot of schools will put out uh, local ad spots on their Thursday folders or on the back of their agenda or something like that, right? And it could be something like uh, bring your agenda to, you know, I don't know, Cooper's lunch counter and get, you know, a dollar off your lunch every day that you bring your agenda. And that is something that person is going to see and be able to interact with rather than like putting money into a website that these kids are not looking at because they see the lunch counter across the street. It's so much more common knowledge that we can just walk over there. So then take it, you know, somewhere else. If, um, if you're a coffee shop and you are wanting to increase your foot traffic, you're looking at your 2022 budget. Um, and again, maybe you're saying we just want, we want to, over the course of the whole year, we want to dump $10,000 in Facebook ads because Facebook can target our people geographically. And to that, I would say, sure, they can, but to an ever decreasing, you know, uh, rate, ever decreasing effectiveness because privacy is becoming a concern. Social is so noisy. Social media, uh, you know, is quickly becoming the TV of the 50s, 60s, 70s, where it used to be really cheap to run a TV ad. So everybody did it. And then TV got so expensive that only national brands did it. And they really irked out or edged out all these small businesses. Social is on the cusp of that. And so to this coffee shop, I would say, take your 10,000 bucks and do a, you know, big giveaway every month. You could have a thousand or $800 giveaway every single month of the year and attract more organic attention than paying Mark Zuckerberg to show up on his network, right? Uh, you could take that 10,000 bucks and put a, a rewards program in where every, you know, fifth coffee was free or every fifth coffee got you a breakfast sandwich. Think outside the box, like you said earlier, about ways that motivate people your people, right? Like these are your people. Who do you want coming to your business? Think about ways that motivate them as a way to spend money rather than just wasting it on the stuff that you heard was great or you think you need to do. There's a lot of marketing where business owners feel good about it. And social is a big example of this. If you are struggling with your marketing and you post on, you know, Instagram and Facebook two times this week, you feel good about the marketing you did, but you have no idea if that's actually moving the needle because it's not part of a real plan. And social media is the biggest culprit in this because we get to do it quick, fast, and cheap, right? Or quick, easy, and cheap. I'll say it that. You pull out Instagram, you post on your brand's channel, and you're like, ah, oh, good. I did a little bit of marketing today. And it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything. There's no strategy behind it. Take that you know, 10 minutes you would spend on an Instagram post over the course of a month and think on a giveaway, think on a rewards uh, program, something that's really going to mean something to your people. So as far as <clears throat> if you had to take a, a baby business or somebody that maybe they have had a great business for even 50 years, however, mm. they're like, I need to market. I need yeah. to get out there more. I need to build a website or whatever. We don't even have a website or, you know, they're just been word of mouth their whole life. Or like I said, maybe it's a new business that mm -hmm. is just kind of getting going in the last year or so. What is a one, two, three step process for what are the kind of the basics? Like, come on, you have to have this yeah. um, things. Of course, I know that eventually you could, like you said, run, run Google ads or, or TV commercials. And there's, there's, millions of endless opportunities for different marketing channels. However, yeah. what in your opinion is kind of a one, two, three baby step process for marketing? Yeah. Um, so if you're a, if you're a, a business of any size or age, right? Yeah. Like, like you're saying, Steve, and you're just getting started in marketing. Um, the best thing that you can do as a one, two, three, first, you're going to get clear about what you offer. We have hit that already, but um, that's the grunt test. What do you offer? How does it make their lives better? And how do they get it? So get clear and write that stuff down so that you can repeat it, right? So you can go back to it. So first step is to get clear about your offer. The second step is to find a way to build a relationship. And this one is huge spectrum, but if you're going to take a potential client out for coffee um, and introduce them to your offer 
tell them a little bit about your business, ask for the sale or whatever. That's a sales funnel, but it just happens face to face over one or two coffee meetings. On the other end of that spectrum is, is digital marketing as it's as its big behemoth self, right? It's uh, awareness through a website or a Facebook or an Instagram ad all the way through to more information and enlightenment and then commitment for a buy now or a, you know, book a call or whatever it is. And there's a whole big structure. All of those things, what you need to realize are just relationships. They're just plans or funnels for a relationship. So my plan is I take a prospect out for coffee. We talk about it. I gauge their interest. I send them some information when I get back to the office and then I schedule dinner with them in a week. And at that dinner, I'm going to try to close the deal. That's a sales funnel. That's a client relationship. Same thing digitally, but maybe times a thousand, right? A thousand people are going to see my Instagram this week and visit and 500 of them are going to visit my website and get more information. And 20 of them are going to book a call with me and I'm going to get on that call and I'm going to try to sell them and I might close five deals. That's still a relationship. And the important part about that relationship is top to bottom, all of your messaging needs to be consistent. It needs to be building trust and convincing this person that you're the expert on solving their problem. So you go back to that number one, that's why you get clear first. And then number three is have a plan for what happens, right? When someone says yes, or someone says I'm interested. So your sales process at the end of all of that is something you have to scope out. You really have to write it down. So let's take a mom and pop example people who are traditionally in a role where they're like, oh my gosh, this is way too much marketing for me. I would never do all of this. And let me push back to them and say, get clear about what you offer. Why are you important to these, you know, hundred customers that you see in the course of a month? Why, why do, why do they care? What problem do you solve for them? Write that down so that you can say those words then to other people on social media, on a sign or a banner out in front of your business at the local chamber of commerce, wherever you're going to be, you're going to say these words, then develop what you know as your relationship. How many times does somebody visit your shop before they buy? right? If they come into your shop, maybe they're just browsing and you offer some kind of value. You answer a question or you give them a card to come back for a discount when they've decided to buy. Maybe they buy right then and it was because you were kind and helpful. All of that's relationship, but you kind of have to think through it and say, how am I going to repeat this relationship, right? Don't leave it to chance. And then the, the final piece of that is what happens when they say yes. And maybe that's as simple as they bring the purchase up to the register and you check them out and take their payment. But how do we keep that going? You're skipping that part, right? Like what we haven't fully answered the question, what happens? Maybe I give them a discount card for their second visit. Uh, visit. Maybe I give them a referral card for a discount for a friend. Maybe I ask them to sign up for my email list if I've got one. All of that should be planned. And I think that's where a lot of people miss out on marketing is they assume that it's expensive and big and complicated. And all it really is, is no, let's just actually get a really good plan for how we're going to build a relationship with the people that we serve and what we're going to do at every step of that to keep them knowing that we're the best, we, they can trust us and that we want their business again. And that's kind of what I would say. One, two, three, get clear about what you're offering. Define the relationship. How am I going to build that relationship? And then three, make a plan for what happens when someone says yes, so that they'll say yes a second time so that they'll tell their friends to go say yes. Those three things if you did that in 2022 as a small business, not if you did it perfectly, not if you invested $10,000 in it, if you just did those three things as a business as best you can and as often as you can, you would see exponential growth in 2022. So, you know, what's funny about you walking through that is basically you're just putting yourself in the shoes of a customer. You said step one is think about your brand and how you're, you're portraying yeah. yourself to your customer. That's how does your customer become aware of you? <laughs> so that's yeah. step one. Step two, you talked about this actual sales process or the sales funnel or however you want to define that. Right. Is 
what does the customer go through? And, you know, what's funny is, is I think a lot of business owners, you know, well, what happens then? Well, they call me, well, where's your phone number? I, I don't know, you know, or when they totally. call you, well, it's always busy or whatever, you know, they don't actually put themselves in the shoe of a customer. Yeah. And then finally, what happens after they buy, you know, how are you collecting um, the information? How are you going to get them to come back? You know, what's funny about that is literally retail step, step one, two, and three for 2022 is put yourself in the shoes of the customer and see what they go through. What's the sales cycle like for them? Um, so that's, yep. that's amazing clarity. And that right there is why pretty websites don't cut it because pretty websites yeah. are confusing to people. But when you take yourself and put yourself in your customer's shoes and your potential client's shoes, and you answer the question, what do I offer? How does it make lives better? And how do I get it? you then get really clear on how they see you. And if you bought a pretty website or you paid a lot of money for a Facebook ad and you never asked those three questions or worse, your marketer never asked you those questions, you're in trouble uh, because you're pouring money into whatever it is, awareness, enlightenment, commitment, whatever stage of your sales funnel, you're pouring money into something that is simply confusing people and driving them away. So let me ask you this. We've talked a lot about, you know, clearing your brand message. And, and I think a lot of that is even to take it a step back is defining who your customer is. But I have kind of a predicament, you know, with our business and with a lot of different people's businesses, you are not just selling to one person. Let's say you sell, you know, something that you can eat. Well, who eats your product? Well, you know, if you're a restaurant, who yeah. who comes to your restaurant? Well, Young couples come there on a date. Older couples come there on a date. Some people yeah. bring their family. Some people have birthday parties there. Um, and so it, with a lot of businesses, you're selling to just a huge different group of audience. Well, how can you make somebody's life easier on the first date might be different. Your branding or your messaging might be different to a family or whatever. So yeah. how would you tackle somebody that said, you know, I have six different customers that I sell to. Do you think that's a business flaw or do you think um, that's mm. something that you can tackle? Yeah. Oh, great question, Steve. So the, the, really the, the idea here is a lot of us as business owners, um, we start something and then we just, we see other people using it and we kind of have this aha moment where we say, Oh, well, I thought we were a really great date spot for young couples, but I see as those couples grow up, they're bringing their families here. Or I see, you know, as uh, high school students find out about our restaurant, they want to come by uh, just with a group of friends. And, and that triggers in our brain this idea like, I need to make some marketing for that. And my, my, my advice to you, if you're dealing with this in your business, is to hold up just give yourself a moment to ask a couple of questions. Is that still your ideal client? And this is why I tell all of my clients, and even for you, Steve, we keep this on file. We write down our customer personas and we revisit them regularly and ask ourselves, is this still the ideal client or clients we're going for? Because that protects us against mission drift, right? Or like focus drift, where if we see this group of high schoolers in our date night restaurant on a Friday night. And we're like, oh my gosh, I should be running an ad to high school students because they would love to come here. But we've never actually done the research to determine, is this just a kind of oddball group of kids that wanted to come here? Or is this truly a trend? Or is this a foundational shift in our business? So that would be my first like, point about that is, let's stop for just a minute and ask ourselves, is this new persona that we're seeing around our business a little more often? Are they actually our people, like enough to go after us? And then the second thing I would say is many, many, many business owners are terrified of niching. They're terrified of focusing down and offering less or um, offering it to fewer people. And I will say, um, you know, Smart Pizza Marketing was on the podcast a couple weeks back. And he, I thought he had the most brilliant answer of, uh, where he said, Hey, don't offer also the fettuccine and also the salad and also the, you know, calzone or whatever. He was like, just offer the great pizza if that's what you're known for and start there. 
Um, and that's what will carry you forward. So I would say to some people, yeah, like you need to not sell to six different kinds of people. If the six different kinds of people are so different that it's stressing your business, stressing you, stressing your system, stressing your employees, like pushing you to the point of, I don't know if we can do this anymore here. Take my permission for 2022 and lop off a whole segment of customers, lop off a whole product offering that isn't really making you money. And it's a terrible, difficult sell anyway. Right? So feel free to prune down for 2022. And then here's my last piece of advice. Imagine a golden thread that runs through every person or every uh, group of people that your product or service touches. If you can find a golden thread, then you can sell to six different personas. So if my restaurant, I think my restaurant is a great date night spot for young couples. Um, but then I start seeing groups of high schoolers in, I start seeing larger families in, um, and I, I kind of have to ask myself some honest questions. And what I realize is that we've actually become this Italian staple in our town. And so it doesn't matter who you are. If you want great Italian food, you're coming to us. So now I need to acknowledge that my golden thread is actually not that I provide a great Friday night date spot. And that's my problem I'm solving and how I make life better. My golden thread is I actually provide the best Italian food within 60 miles. In and so this if, area. Yeah, yeah, if you're craving Italian, you need to come to us. Um, so the, the message can shift over time. I always tell people be very careful um, about changing your messaging once you've gotten really clear. But if you are ready to go to the next level and to and to expand your offering to more people, you have to find that golden thread. What's the thing that ties it all together in a clear way that still says what you offer? How does it make their life better and how do they get it? You know, I think uh, in his book, uh, Mike McAllitz's book, uh, Pumpkin Plan, it's one of my favorite books that I've read in the last few years. He talks about this same exact idea, but he talks about it from the, the customer persona side that what happens as you build your business is that, and I, I, I think why it was so powerful to me is because I watched it happen and you, yeah. what happens is, is you, you have one person come in and they say, can you also order this or can you also offer this? And you say, you bet I can sure. You do that. Well, then that person, then somebody else new comes in and buys that thing that you just added on to help this other customer out. They start buying this from you. And then they say, can you also add this or offer this or order this for me? Yeah, no problem. I can do that as well. And then you get so strung out, you're making this huge full circle and you're offering a hundred different things. Well, that person that was your ideal client to begin with, they find your entire business confusing because you yeah. offer 1900 different things, yeah. which makes you weaker at all of them. You're not good at one particular thing. Yeah. Um, and then you stop appealing to the one customer that you wanted to appeal to. You know, if, if your restaurant, you do the best, you see that old people on dates spend the most money more than anybody else. Yeah. But then you start having discount lunches and you have 30 high school kids in there during lunchtime. Yeah. They're not going to find that appealing yeah, you got the quick buck, but you're getting farther and farther away from your target demographic. And same applies with now you have a birthday party room. Well, you just carved off a quarter of your restaurant to have a private party room. And that customer, the old couple on a Saturday afternoon that would regularly come visit you doesn't go there yeah. anymore because it takes an hour and a half to get into that place. And anyways, I just, I'm very passionate about that because I think that the intent is good from people because they say, yes, 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 I can do that. I can do totally. that. I'm a yes man. You know, that's what I do. That's what we do. Well, no, that's not, you're killing your business actually, because you're, you're getting farther and farther away from the customer that you actually want to make happy. Yeah. When I onboard a new client, um, as a, as a story brand guide, we start with messaging hands down. I mean, you experienced this, Steve, my immediate questions were, more about what we're saying to people than how we're actually going to say it. And so when I onboard a new client, my very first question is, what do you want to be known for more than anything? And the answer to that question for a typical small business owner is going to be really powerful and should be kind of their focus that they revisit every six months, maybe every quarter. 
um, to say, okay, remember, this is what I'm building this audience for. I want to be known for this. I want to be known for helping people successfully retire. I want to be known for being the best Saturday afternoon lunch spot for the senior crowd around town. I want to be known for, you know, the best coffee shop uh, meeting place in the city. So pick what you want to be known for and then focus on that and revisit it. But the the other thing that I would say um, to that is when you experience what you've described, Steve, where people start saying, hey, you know, could I do this or can you offer that? You know, can you do this also? Um, again, you have to stop yourself and ask, is that valuable? Is that what I want to go after? Um, because if you're a young business, absolutely, your path has to be fastest path to cash because you've got to have cash to invest in in building this. But if you are a business who wants to be known for something and you're ready to build that marketing and invest in it, you have to limit yourself to market to those people. You know, th that senior crowd, those people who need help retiring, uh, the people who want to have a great coffee shop to have a meeting at. And here's the deal. I mean, listen, truthfully, small business owners, this advice actually frees you up when you really embrace it. You get to go, oh my gosh, like I don't have to build that party room, right? I don't have to offer the discount lunch. Um, I'm going to really focus on the people that spend more. I'm going to try to increase their per ticket or per visit, you know, spend. I'm going to try to get the same kind of customers. So I'm going to replicate, right? My ideal clients, the people that are already here, and I'm going to invest and double down on those things. And then that's when you can start building a marketing plan where you say, if these, if this senior crowd is, is my people, then I, there's no way I'm getting on TikTok, right? That's not going to benefit me in the least. If this senior crowd is my main, you know, crowd, I'm not going to invest in a new website. Maybe the one I've got is perfectly fine. It tells our hours Helps and lists the phone number right? Yeah. yeah. You get to really focus your efforts on what matters when you niche and it frees you up. Literally go with the coffee shop example. Then you get to be unique. And that's where we go back to Mike McCallowitz's book, get different. So if you want to be a coffee shop, that's known as the best meeting spot in your town, how can you be different than Starbucks, which is a tiny cram packed, loud, you know, annoying place to be. Now you have some direction in how to not market your business, so, so much as literally build what you're offering to people because you've taken that moment and said, what do I want to be known for? And who are these people that are my people? How can I serve them well? Dude, Mike McCallowitz has gotten so many shout outs on this. We're going to have to charge him for uh, sponsoring this I know. episode. I mean, and if you this, haven't listened to that this, episode. Chop this up and then uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll chop this up. I'll tag him in and say the invoice is headed towards you. There you uh, go. So... Uh, to add to that too, I think um, in his book, uh, Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, um, mm. he talks about finding this niche of you know being different than all other companies. Um, one thing I think that's important to add to that though is if you're going to be the date night spot for older people or whatever, you need to genuinely ask yourself – it depends on your ambition, of course, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but can I be, he said that the companies that did this the best, they said, can we be the best in the world at this? Yeah. Whatever sure. your ambition is, they were publicly traded huge fortune 500 companies, yeah. you know, so your question might be, can I be the best in the state at this? Can yeah. I be the best in my town at this or whatever your ambition level is? But I think what a lot of people do is, is they say, I want to be a discount grocer for people in medium to large size towns, blah, blah. blah. And you're like, uh, okay, well, that's Walmart and Costco and Sands, just letting yeah. you know that that's who you're <laughs> the competing with, field. you know? Yeah. So, you know, I think that that's important for a coffee shop to not put themselves directly in competition with Starbucks for a um, restaurant sure. to not com completely, you know, put themselves in competition with, you know, Hey, I want to be the date night spot for somebody with buffets and blah, blah. You're like, okay, you're golden corral. That's a business. It's already yeah. going, you know, or whatever <laughs> it might be. So, um, you know, that's something that I've had to go through before is like, we want to be this and this and this and this and this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Your tractor supply. And there's a lot of those, you know? Yeah. And, and so, and um, let me ask I you, was that important. process painful for you? to, to get honest and like, let go. And I don't mean like of your own aspirations. I'm saying, let go of like, I know I could make some money selling this or doing this. And I got to say no to that. 
did you experience that pain? No, because I think here's the lifestyle or here's the, the business cycle. What happens is, is you say yes to everything, right? And you're right. doing everything. So you add it in, add it in, add it in, add it in. And then when you ask yourself this question is like, how can I get more and, um, you know, become a niche business in something yeah. you've added all this random crap in and you're probably having to service it all. So you're yeah. having to make these people happy and these people happy and this people happy. And when somebody, somebody says to you, Hey, if you just narrow down and made this one customer happy, you could say, forget all that stuff. Well, yeah. that's freeing of you mentally. It's like, yeah. Oh, I can just tell somebody, no, we don't specialize in that. I can yeah. just tell somebody, no, we don't have a discount for large meals because we actually cater to two people, um, two people yeah. on dates and older people. You know, no, we don't yeah. have high chairs because all we cater to is to, to older people on dates. You know, yeah. it, it was freeing to me to say, we focus on the equine customer. So no, we can't special order that dog food because there's yeah. 347,000 different dog foods. Yeah. So we never could carry them all anyways. And so it was freeing to say, no, we specialize in horses. We don't have that and we can't order it or no, we can't have this cattle, whatever. So to me, yeah. the life cycle of a business, you don't get to that point where I'm going to focus on this one particular customer until you've added in, added in, added in. And you're usually at your wits end and you're like, I need to focus on something, you know, and then you can dial it back to where, you know, and then what yeah. happens is, is you dial it back, you might lose a little bit. It's kind of like pruning. And that was sure. uh, Mike's. Mike's example in the book, the pumpkin plan, you might prune some of these pumpkins off and yeah, it's painful because you just dropped some business. However, yeah. that gives you more room to grow now and makes you different from other businesses. And I think that's definitely the point right there where you're at that place of freedom, you know, so let's say our coffee shop. Um, and here's the reality. I think coffee shops, independent coffee shops across the country, maybe even around the world, found themselves over the last five years of going, well, I guess we better figure out how to make a Frappuccino. And every coffee shop I talk to hates doing those blended ice drinks, right? But they know they're directly competing with Starbucks. And my message and what you're saying, what we're saying here is, dude, let go of that. Like, don't offer the Frappuccino blended drink. Nope, we don't do that. We're different. Right. We are this, right? So if you're the meeting spot for the professionals, great. If you're the study spot for students, then maybe you do need to offer Frappuccinos, but you got to get real clear about how you're different than Starbucks because you're encroaching, right? You're going closer and closer to Starbucks. So or, or there totally needs to be drop the espresso and say, no, we don't even serve coffee. Here's something with a cupcake in it, though. You know, right, like right. double we down went on way whatever out, it is. Yeah. Because, and that's the whole, that's the whole point is if you're serving to professionals, business, prof, to business professionals, the three college girls trying to figure out since you don't serve Frappuccinos or whatever that are standing in front of that person in line and he's sitting there waiting and can't get his, whatever that person you're trying to appeal to, you're yeah. literally making that person wait so that you can serve a client. That's not even your ideal that's client. Not your that's not your ideal. The, yeah. That's the point, you know, is whatever your ideal client is, is choose that option. So you're freeing up business yep. and resources and all kinds of things. And that goes back to number two, right? Like figure out the relationships that you want uh, and then and then deepen those. And so if the if the client is standing in front of you who's blocking your ideal client from from you know joining you at the register or joining you on the call, you've got to quickly get that person out. And that's where we get to a place where in sales, disqualification of a customer or a lead is just as important and maybe more so than qualification of a lead. Same and and I tell people, message, right? oh, for sure. If your marketing message isn't scaring some people away or making people go, oh, that's obviously not for me, then it's Polarizing. not clear enough. That's right. It literally yeah. needs to drive people away who you don't want. And that's why a good example for you, uh, you know, at, at Cook Feed, we came right out of the gate with Shout great hay and feed. feed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> great hay and feed for your horses so that people who would read that would go, well, I don't have horses. Cool. Don't click on our links. Cool. Don't sign up for our emails. Cool. Right. Don't even come into the store because what we're going for are people who have horses and then to your so everybody knows and we're really clear. Yeah, Steve, you sell dog food and chicken scratch and, you know, all kinds of other stuff. But because people who have horses also have those other things, we are still funneling down and saying, don't come to us if you're just looking for dog food. 
Come to us if you're a horse owner who also has a couple dogs. And that's where we niche even further. So our brand message right out front doesn't say a single thing about dogs or chickens or farms or anything. It's, it's very, very clear about what we offer so that people who don't need it will just move on and they won't take up our, our space in our funnel, take up our space of our salespeople, of our store managers, you know, anything like that. We don't want a single breath or a cent wasted on people who are never going to shop with us anyway. So I don't even know. I had notes and I haven't looked at them in about 20 minutes. We're way uh, off the notes. Yeah. Dude, this is about how our meetings go too. So, um, sure. No surprise, no surprise at all. Um, so let's, let's dial this back in to one final okay. question. And the question that I like to ask everyone as they end their podcast is <clears throat> if you had to talk to someone, and the someone that I'm thinking might be listening to this is someone that wants to grow their business. They want, they know that marketing is important, but they have not been checking that box here recently. And they are trying to put together a marketing plan for 2022 and they're are plateaued in their business or they're overwhelmed with the idea of marketing. What would you say to that person? Yeah, I, I to that person in particular, I would say, Listen to everything we talked about in this episode, but pick one marketing channel or effort and use that as much as you can. And you're going to have to ask yourself some questions about where, again, your people are hanging out. Get honest about that. Um, because for some businesses, email is where it's at. They get people's email addresses. They build a big list and they regularly email them, especially in retail. Um, we all know this, we've signed up for retail, you know, email lists to get the discount. And then we get an email every single day from here until eternity. Uh, that is email marketing. And I would push back on anyone who says email is dead. Statistically speaking, email is still more engaging and converting, uh, than social media is. So that's to say people are opening emails and reading them. Uh, at a higher rate than people are seeing your content on Instagram and Facebook and people are clicking through that email to buy a product or do the thing you're asking them to do at a higher rate than they are clicking through social media. I believe that. So just as a little shout out for email there, but if the, if the channel as a small plateaued business or somebody just getting started, if the channel is where your people are hanging out, then go all in on that channel. If that channel is Instagram, then go all in on Instagram. So what, what I would recommend is if you're going to have to DIY this, find an online course or a coach that you can hire to for a fraction of the cost of farming it out. They're going to teach you how to do it and do it well. But here's the deal. You got to show up every day and do that. Pick your one channel and show up every day and do it. If your website is your one channel, people are searching for you on the internet. I go to things like, um, you know, pest control companies, electricians, plumbers, huge presence on, on website and, and social media, or uh, sorry, website and Google. So get your website right, get that SEO locked in, and then get your, you know, Google crystal set up and make it just churn, right? Make sure that if you're investing in that, whether it's time or money, that people are clicking on there and coming to your website. And to that business owner, if you're really headed to the next level and you're plateaued as an electrician, don't for one second think you need to go to Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or brochures or postcards, like go all in on your one channel because that's your fastest path to cash then you can diversify and invest in 2023. You know, if you've, if you've made yourself $20,000 you can use on marketing this year, wait and, and diversify later. So I would say that's probably the biggest thing for somebody plateaued. Pick that one channel um, and run really hard in it. Now, again, because that's what my certification's in and that's where I think is the most powerful, get your messaging right as you do that. So if you're going to go all in on Instagram, your messaging has to be right. And it has to be that grunt test. And the grunt test is really just like three things that everybody should be able to grunt back to you or, you know, like a caveman could grunt back to you once they've seen your marketing. And that is, what do you offer? A very clear explanation of it. How does it make life better and how do they get it? And you need to 
you need to work on this. Like you don't need to just sit down at Instagram and answer those three questions in a post. And then next week, come back and write something different. You need to sit down with a literal piece of paper and a pencil and answer those three questions for yourself and then put it to put it away, come back to it tomorrow after you've slept on it and ask yourself, is this the clearest I can make this? Is this the fewest words? Is this the most important? Is this the most emotional? Whatever it is, how can it be better? And, and do that for a couple of days until you get that, be- that message on that piece of paper better. And then you can start putting on your website, put it on social, put it in your channel. Chris Fox, thank you for being on. If you have questions for him, all his details of your website better be on point. With your <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> exactly. His website. If you need an example to look at, you can go to his website and check out what he has on. Go that. to your thank website. You. Or right? go to our that, website, cookfeednowdoor.com. Yeah, cookfeed yeah, forget his website. Yeah, this episode is brought to you by cookfeednowdoor.com <laughs> for all your equine needs. There you go. Um, yeah, go to our website and you can see that. Um, so thank you so much for being on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Better Business Podcast with me, your host, Steve Cook. You know, starting or growing a business is hard work, so I hope that today's advice made it just a little bit easier for you. We'll be sharing more about this exact topic all this week on my social platforms. You can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, or if you would like to get a a personalized blog post from me on this topic, you can join my email list and I will send you an email once a week. You can check the show notes to subscribe to that or find me on my website, whatever's easier for you. Now get out there and go grow a better business with this advice from today's Real Pros. Thank you for listening.